Hello, everyone. Welcome back to uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Ruin, everyone's favorite edgy fanfiction. As a quick recap, this is chapter three. Currently, the names are blacked out right now because if you see them, it'll be spoiler, so this is your last chance to go and watch chapters one and two if you haven't seen them yet. Okay, three, two, one. So as you can see, Zorua is now Zoroark uh, in the last... Well, to recap episode one as well, um, mainly uh, talking about Zorua's past. Zorua was an escaped slave on a different planet <laughs> held by someone called the Bloodhead. And then uh, Zorua escaped and came to the guild. And then... Uh, oh god, so much happened. Um... Uh, uh, Dusk- and then Duskdor captured Zorua, and then Zorua killed him, and now they're trying to get to the center of the Earth to fight, uh, Darkrai. Or the Nightmare King. Yes, the Nightmare Tyrant. Yes, and we have- we have two new guests, uh, two new voice actors. Uh, first of all, Duskdor's dead, so rest in no. peace. But replacing him, cut off one voice actor and two more will take its place. <laughs> uh, first we have Meg playing Darkrai and these minions that you'll see later on, not like the Despicable Me minions, but... <laughs> Hello. Meg, are you here? Yep. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> your introduction? Alright. Uh, and then Kavite will be playing uh, our new secret character. Yay. <laughs> you guys have the most when under- It was going to be Grovile. What? I remember when Kamite was going to be Grovile. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the original plan. Let's not talk about that. And then you had <laughs> work and stuff. All right. But, hey, uh, he's here now, and we could go ahead and get started with episode three of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Ruin, chapter three, The Old Kingdom. Interior, Guild Meeting Room, Day. The meeting room for the guild is a large square room with glass windows on all sides. Tiles of different colors are on the floor. Chairs are arranged in a semicircle, with a step stool placed in front of the chair in the middle. The guild members are sitting in the chairs. I don't know what the voice was. Um, <laughs> it's different every ah. time. It's, it's just spin the mystery wheel of voices. <laughs> just say ah at the end of every sentence, and I no, don't think anyone will to... notice. Bailos, we <laughs> need to decide what our next <laughs> mission is going to be. Grova, what do you think? <laughs> ah. Oh, wow. <laughs> to get to the center of the earth and destroy the nightmare tyrant, of course. Who is the nightmare tyrant? Ah, you can't imagine the horror. The guild members begin to scream and shout. Ah! 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 The Nightmare Tyrant is the ruler of the Nightmare Realm. He is the demon lord that rules the night. He is the ruler of all that is dark. We must unite to fight this evil. But, I'm sorry, whose cat is that? Sam's cat! <laughs> I'm <sorry>. Sam! <laughs> Bitstick, what the hell, man? We're recording here. Just imagine that's part of the screens <laughs> of the guild members. Yeah. And, and Perfect. It's a skitty in the guild. But I thought we killed Dusknor and it was all over. Yes, we did. But the Nightmare Tyrant has risen again. He has returned with the power of the Dark Void, which can only mean that he's in league with the Dark Gods. We don't know where Primal Dialga is, but it's likely he's with the Nightmare Tyrant. Oh, then what do we do? We go to the center of the earth, of course. That's what I always do when I have problems. <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> and how are we going to get there? I've been trying to figure out how to open a portal to the center of the earth. It's the only way. But how? We don't know how to make one. I do. I've been working on it for what? years. It requires what? a great deal of energy and a powerful object. What sort of object? A, stick. a red dragon. <laughs> a red dragon? What do you mean by that? 
I mean, a magical artifact of the highest order. I've been searching all over the world for one. What does it look like? Is it an actual dragon? Oh, well, it's more of a red dragon-shaped piece of stone. It looks like a large ruby. Any ideas of where we can find one? Only one place. The ruins of the old kingdom. So that's where we're going? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on here! You just ruined the entire continuity! The universe will now collapse. Yes. What are we gonna do once we get there? We're going to the center of the Old Kingdom. We're gonna search for the Dragonstone. And where is the Old Kingdom? It's in the mountains southwest of here. We'll have to journey far, but that shouldn't be a problem for us. Does anyone live there? Not anymore. It's a dead zone. So what's it like over there? <laughs> I've never been able to get very far in. The mountains are alive with magical wars that make it impossible for me to travel there. Fortunately, I was able to find a way around them. I discovered an opening in the mountains. I named it the Hole of Horrors. Oh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, whose profile would name it that? It's a long, dark cave that goes deep into the earth. That doesn't sound good. It's not. It's a living hell. Well, how do we get there? It's not far from here. We'll only have to walk for one day at most. We'd better get ready then. Who's coming with? I am. Me too. Great. Let's go. Exterior. Hole of horrors. Evening. The group <laughs> arrives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just... They're they just there. like that. This isn't a road trip movie. <laughs> <laughs> Exterior. Hole of horrors. Evening. The group arrives at the Hole of Horrors and sets up camp at its entrance. They prepare some dinner and have Chimchar light a campfire. The Hole of Horrors. That's quite the ominous name. Yeah, I named it that. <laughs> Sorry, it absolutely is. <laughs> What's so horrible about it? There's rumors that something terrible happened there. There are tales of ghosts and Pokemon that whisper of the horrors that are kept within. I've heard those stories too. Well, let's get this over with... Oh. What is it? Uh... I forgot to pack a flashlight. We'll have to find a way to get around at night. <laughs> <laughs> I added this. <laughs> Thank you oh, for the geez. line. Guys, there's a constant fire coming out of my ass. As long as I'm here, we'll be fine. <laughs> Good point. We owe you one, Chimchar. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and we'll never <laughs> forget it. Now, let's get some sleep. We have a long day ahead of us tomorrow. <laughs> Every... Everyone... <laughs> Why? <laughs> this is so... Everyone nods off to the sounds of Chim Char's ass crack. <laughs> I can't... I can't... <laughs> See, the funny part is that this line was not written by me. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Every... The gods have yeah. blessed us. Okay, I gotta try to read this for people who are just listening to the audio. Everyone nods off to the sounds of Chimcho's ass crack fire. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to do it that way. <laughs> I think that enhanced the experience. In IMAX 3D. <laughs> the next morning, the four Pokemon wake up and pack their things. Chimchar lights the campfire and the crew eats their packed lunches. They head into the hole and begin their descent down- I'm sorry, Sam's cat is- <laughs> <laughs> This is the- this is the echoes of the ghosts. It's the horrors coming from the hole. <laughs> the next morning, the four Pokemon wake up and pack their things. Chimchar lights the campfire and the group eats their packed lunches. They head down into the hole and begin their descent down the steep- rough walls of the cave. They travel for quite a long time, but eventually arrive at a ledge deep within the cave. They prepare their gear to explore the cave further. Grovile checks the map that was given to him by Syllabi. Piplup checks her surroundings. I wonder how far we have to go. Zoroark stares at the ground. <sighs> I'm getting really hungry. <laughs> Chimchar stares at his ass crack. Why? 
Did you put that in? No, there? no, I did not. <laughs> I did that. God, this this AI really is a fanfic writer. I'm getting hot, staring at oh my, my own abstract. That's because it's on fire. <laughs> I like how this is the first time Chimchar is, like, aware of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Chimchar just had, like, a crisis. Chimchar you stares... Up... Chimchar stares at his ass crack. You bring up one, like, game mechanic, or whatever you want to call yeah, it, one, one time. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I'm pretty up... sure this is the last time Chimchar's ass is a plot point. I'm getting really hot. Grovile snaps his fingers. I'm getting really scared. Or really excited. Piplup closes her eyes. Scared is more likely. I don't feel like running anymore. I want to go back to the beach. I miss the beach. Zoroark sighs. <sighs> I want to eat. I want to eat something other than rocks. Chimchar opens his bag. You've been eating fucking rocks? I brought plenty of food. Do you want some? <laughs> Uh, sure? I wasn't yes. talking to you! Give us food, Chimchar! I haven't eaten in two days! You ate a half hour ago! <laughs> Zorark reaches into Chimchar's bag and pulls out a handful of food. She tosses some to Grovile. Grovile looks at the food and speaks. Thanks, I, I think. No problem. I brought plenty more. Really? That is so awesome! Why did you even bring food if you weren't gonna eat it? I brought it because this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. There are no forks. After eating, the group continues through the Hole of Horrors. They walk the path to the right of the waterfall, as indicated by the map. They come to a large pit that is filled with hundreds of dead bodies. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Jesus! What? This, this is like gives me the How horrible. There are so many people who went through this. Who could have caused this? So... Are we sure this is the way? Yeah, I, I can't be sure because I've never been here before, but it's the only one I recognize from the map. Well, let's just hope it's the right one. There is a long, dark, and narrow tunnel. There are torches every three feet hanging from the walls. Grivile takes the lead with Chimchar following behind. Zoroark trails behind with Pipla. And I wonder what's down there. I don't want to know. Why is your name off center? I don't know. I don't know what happened. Zoroark, <laughs> but slightly to the right. <laughs> we don't have much of a choice. Let's go. The group walks down the spiral staircase for what feels like hours. As they descend, it is initially easy, but they soon encounter the first dead end. There is no other way to go but backtrack. This second dead end re reminds them that they are going in the wrong direction. We are going in the wrong direction! <laughs> I can smell it. Grovile <laughs> sense in the direction he believes he's going. Smells <laughs> <laughs> like shit. I think we're totally lost. The only thing I can smell is you! Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Wow. Is that that was the AI! <laughs> Fucking burned. Let's go. The group walks in the direction Grovile believes is right. This tunnel isn't as dark as the one they just walked in, but it isn't exactly light either. They walk for quite a while. This feels a little bit like a labyrinth. I don't like this. I think we're going in circles. Oh, we're not. I think we're getting close to the, where the red dragon is supposed to be. Oh. I still smell the scent of the red dragon. It smells like blood. No, it's actually a good sign, but we still need to be careful. There could be traps. Yeah! They continue to walk for some time. Grovile is leading the group and walks faster than usual. Zoark tries to keep up, but she is having a hard time keeping up with Grovile. The tunnel what? I don't know, I guess she's slow. Uh, <laughs> the tunnel continues to become darker and darker. Zoark isn't sure if this is normal for a cave. <laughs> <laughs> Zoroark isn't sure if it normally gets darker and darker as you go into a cave. <laughs> they continue walking until they finally come to a fork in the path. Grovile stops and whiffs in each direction. There are two paths here. 
Oh my god. <laughs> what happened to you? Use your what eyes? What happened, happened to your mic? He sounded <laughs> so scuffed. I'm on a phone, man. I don't know what's going on. It smells like there are two paths here. Two paths? Yeah. Let's do the one on the left. Gervile takes the left path, with Zoroark and Pipla following. The group walks in silence for some time. <laughs> Does Chim Charges We've... stay behind? Yeah. <laughs> Bye, bitch. They're ass crack light. How will they survive? Oops, I, I, uh, I forgot to format this correctly. Yeah, the, the, it's yeah, funny. Leave that way. Yeah, We've... okay. <laughs> We've walked for what feels like forever, Zoroark says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going in circles again. It would help if we had some light. Who could who could possibly give us light, Grovile says? <laughs> yeah! Wait, where's Chimchar? Maybe maybe we should go back? Yeah, let's go back. The group quickly heads back to the tunnel they first entered. Grofile walks back to the forks, sniffing the air. Chimchar lied about, about no there forks. being no forks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it still smells like the red dragon. Oh, great. But we need to find Chimchar. He was our only source of light. I guess we have no choice but to turn back. I thought they we quickly... already did turn back. I... <laughs> They quickly head back to the fork and enter the tunnel that led to where they thought they would find Chimchar. The tunnel is darker than the last one. Grovile walks faster and faster, almost as if he were running. <laughs> Zoroark is having a hard time keeping up with him. Maybe she's just not used to walking on two legs. Being yeah. Really <laughs> yeah. That's probably it. I think I see something. What? It, it looks like a small light. Where? Up ahead. Is it Chimchar? I'm, I'm not sure. Suddenly, the tunnel opens up into a large, roughly circular chamber. There is a single pillar of rock in the chamber. There are several passages leading out from this chamber. The walls are decorated with etchings, carvings, and paintings. <sighs> Where is Chimchar? Let's find out. The group walks towards the pillar. Before they get very far, they find a small opening in the pillar of rock. It is the same size as Chimchar. Grovile crawls inside. Oh, God. <laughs> I know- Ito Junji ass shit over here. <laughs> this hole was made for me. Chimchar, are you in there? It's me, Grovile. That audio sounded so crusty, but we're just gonna roll with it because it <laughs> sounds funny. It was so good. The pillar vibrates. Zoroark covers her ears. Ugh. We're in a cave. We're really in a cave. I can't see anything. <laughs> you have to add echo to that in the post. Oh, 100%. All the reverb. Suddenly, a small bit of light appears, getting bigger and bigger as it moves towards Grovile. Is that Chimchar? Yeah, and he's okay. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, I found a new place. Hey, there you are. Did you find it all right? It's a nice place. I like it here. What the like fuck? Oh, I don't know. I'm fucking nervous. <laughs> this is a good haunted house episode. Come on out. We're all here. Thanks for rescuing me. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad we found you. Oh, God, that was a really bad voice crack. Jesus Christ. I really missed you. And I missed you too. The pillar begins vibrating again. The group huddles together. What is that? I have no idea, but I have a bad feeling about this. Okay, Star oh. Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back. Suddenly, the pillar begins to crumble. The group runs out of the cavern and into the sunlight. Zora gasps and rubs her eyes. <gasps> Oh, it's so bright. We're outside. How did we get here? I have no idea, but I think we need to get out of here as soon as possible before we get fried. Fried? I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Is the sun we this get intense? The sun is a deadly laser. <laughs> you can say that again. My ears are still ringing. The group takes a look at their surroundings. They see several ancient buildings in a massive forest. Where are are we? I think we're in the old kingdom. Where are we supposed to go from here? 
we search the buildings. Remember, we're here for the Red Dragon, which is a large ruby shaped like a dragon. The Pokemon who used to live here valued them greatly. They do? Why would they want them? I, I don't know. Maybe that whole building a portal to the center of the universe <laughs> or the center of the world thing, but uh, it's not important now. We just need to find one. Yeah. Now let's search those buildings. The group walks through the buildings, which are scattered around the area. They search the rooms, but find nothing of importance. You know, I think we're wasting our time here. Hey, wait a minute. I think I found something. Where? Look! She points out the window. Chimchar looks out of the window and sees a mysterious black shadow flying through the sky. What is that? I don't know, but it looks like it's carrying something. Or someone. Let's go check it out. Yeah, let's do it. The group runs out of the building into the black shadow. They see a human-like figure lying on a sheet. It looks like it's asleep. Should we wake it up and ask where the red dragon is? Maybe, but let's get closer first. I'd hate for it to attack us, but if it does... We'll use our best judgment. I think we should. What do you think, Zoroar? I think that's a pretty good idea, Pip. But be careful. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. <laughs> the AI does that a lot. But be careful, and don't get too close. I don't want any accidents. Okay. The group walks closer to the dark figure. Now's our chance to get more info out of it. Let's go! What are you waiting for? I'm not entirely sure how to do this. You two go ahead. I'll be there in a moment. <laughs> what? Yeah, no. I'll be there in a moment and ask for advice? So Rourke's gonna pull up Yahoo Answers. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna Google this. Oh. <laughs> Let me do that again. Okay. I'm not entirely sure how to do this. You two go ahead. I'll be there in a moment. A, a moment? <laughs> <laughs> She's a cow. <laughs> I'll be there in a moment and Google for advice. <laughs> hey, so so wait a second. The, the whole thing is that we're waking up this sleeping figure and asking it a question, and you're like, I don't know how to do this. I'm, I'm gonna know. I'm gonna figure it out. Just give me a second. I don't know. <laughs> you can Google how to wake something up. Just Google the advice you need. You just have to wait up to five turns. Play the Poke Flute app. Yes, there you go. <laughs> this is so sad. Alexa, play play the pokey flute. Piplup walks up to the figure. I'm sorry, the cat. <laughs> Piplup said that. Piplup's meowing. <laughs> hey, uh, do you know where the red dragon is? Silence. I don't see any signs of life. Me either. Piplup checks the figure's pulse. Well, there's a pulse! <laughs> well, there's a pulse. Does it look like it's in a state of deep sleep? Yeah, I guess. Well, let's just knock on its head and see what happens. Great. No, wait. What if it gets mad? It could be something really bad. But knocking on its head could wake it up. And I think we should just give it a... Wait, hold on. Isn't that the point? Is that what we're trying to do? Yeah, I know. That's what she's. Yeah. Th I think that's her argument. She's no, no. But then, but then she's saying something completely. Instead of that, we should quick give it a shake, as if waking it up is a bad thing. Oh. Uh, no, maybe it's both. It's it. Listen, we're not. We don't have the technology yet for the AI <laughs> to be this advanced. Don't have the technology. Okay. <laughs> but knocking on its head could wake it up. I think we should just give it a quick shake. Are you okay with that, Chimchar? Well, it could cause some sort of accident, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. I guess it's worth a shot, but do it quick and be careful. <laughs> uh, you have fun with that. Piplup grabs the figure's head and lifts it up and shakes it. Wakey, wakey, eggsy, wakey! <laughs> <laughs> Figure stirs, Grovile and Zoroark to each take a side and they gently shake the figure. Come on, wake up, buddy. Are you okay, buddy? You're gonna be fine. 
<laughs> and Kimite, this is you. The figure sits up, okay. opening its eyes. Who disturbs the flying Dutchman? <laughs> what? Oh, God. I'll do it for real this time. Okay. Oh, what the? That gave me the, it's me, boy. I'm the PS5. Right. Oh, my God. You and brain. <laughs> it's okay. We're friends. The figure rubs its head. Who are you? The figure sits, gets up. He is a tall, handsome young man with a dark skin tone. He wears a scarf and a fedora. Oh, no. That is all he's nice wearing. Instead of what I am. That is all he is wearing. <laughs> uh, I'll be. Uh, you're a human. What are you doing here? <laughs> no idea. I was exploring Dialga's tower when the giant monster showed up and took me prisoner. Dialga's tower? What were you doing there? Apparently, I stumbled upon a door that leads to the tower. I tried to leave, but the monster would not let me. I had to take him down before I could leave. What monster are you talking about? Uh, I'm not sure. It's a pretty big monster. <laughs> Probably that dust off. <laughs> 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 where, where, where did dust talk come from? I don't know. That was not me. The AI just spat that out. It knows some Pokemon. Right, Very cool. Proud of it. It's probably that Dustox. He's been causing havoc ever since I've been here. Dustox? I've heard of that monster. It's really strong. Almost impossible to defeat. That's just straight up wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a giant Dustox. It's Dynamax. To yeah. I would know. I fought him several times, and each time I was the one who ended up defeated. I only managed to escape by luck. Oh. You know where the elk is? No. Not right now. What's mm. your name? My name... It's... Sebastian? <laughs> Sebastian Fitzgerald? <laughs> I googled this name. What? <laughs> Nothing came up. The AI... Uh, has a talent for coming up with names that don't exist, so I don't have to worry about any real Sebastian Fitzgerry suing us. How, how did you wind up here, Sebastian? You're a human, but this planet only has Pokemon. <sighs> a long, long story. Let's just say I was exploring when I got captured. By who? <laughs> An army of super soldiers in a giant spaceship. An invasion of Earth by aliens? Yeah. They were after me be because I found their, their ship in a lost dimension. The what? <laughs> the, the what? <laughs> the what? The lost dimension is a mysterious alternate dimension. I've heard... Hold on! How do you know what Earth is? And how are you talking? You're only oh, just now we get to that bit. <laughs> yeah, I had to. Th I threw that in there because I realized. Hold on, this isn't the normal reaction to ending up in a world of talking foxes. Right. <clears throat> because I too am from Earth. I was kidnapped and enslaved by the same people who captured you. I escaped from them because they thought I was dying. You too. Huh? So, more of Zorark's backstory stuff. Yep. Like, I, I perked yeah. up with the super soldier thing, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> you, you remember when we both were captured before? Oh, the same guys that got Zorua. It's all linked. Remem mm -hmm. Remember when we thought Piplup was the main character? <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Piplup's the, just not Piplup's here. Gonna get her tragic backstory. And, yeah, and the, what the fuck? And the thing is, I never at any point told the... Like I put in character, just you could put in character descriptions. I never put Zorua in there, and the AI just decided. Yeah, I know you wrote all these descriptions, but I'm gonna have to throw them all out for my OC. Oh, no. You you mean you both were captured before? I think so. How did you escape? He said something about a door leading to Dialga's tower. It did. I used it, but they must have sealed it behind me. So. You can travel to other worlds? No. I just used the magic door that was already there and was teleported to this planet. After they sealed the door, they must have thought the dust ox would kill me. But I managed to survive. But why are you here then? 
And did you wind up going from Dialga's tower to here in the Old Kingdom? Dialga put me here. Dialga? The god of time? Yeah, apparently he's been trying to get me back from my own, my own time since I found the ship, but he couldn't get through to me. He was acting strange, like he could hardly control himself. That's because the Nightmare Tyrant has caused him to turn primal. We're here searching for an artifact to stop the Nightmare Tyrant. Nightmare Tyrant? Who's that? His name is Darkrai. He's an ancient Pokemon that is connected to the manifestation of nightmares. We don't know if he's connected to the army that kidnapped you and Zoroark, but killing him would save Dialga. Is he a Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> He's a Pokemon that is literal nightmare come true. Yes, there are rumors of, of him on Earth as well. What can I do to help? Why did you pretend to not know him? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, <laughs> sus. <laughs> this guy is nothing but sus, if you ask me. Yeah, I don't me. trust him. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't miss him. His last name is like hesitated on saying his name. He's got a scarf and a fedora, why should I trust him? Exactly. We're here looking for something called a red dragon, a large ruby containing a lot of power. If you find it, you can help us. We can't kill the Nightmare Tyrant ourselves, and we need all the help we can get. A red dragon? Hmm. I could try looking. I'm a wanderer. I've been to a lot of places. Maybe I, I can find one. Do you think you can travel between worlds too? No way! I couldn't even get a pimple on my butt past the guards. What is that, that a phrase? What? Is that a phrase? <laughs> I didn't think so, but the AI spat it out. That's not a phrase, is it? What is that? No. It might be okay. I've used this before in my life. It might be an old timey phrase. Let's split up to find the red dragon. There has to be one somewhere around here. Okay, but if you do find one, will you bring it to me? Well. That's the point. <laughs> We're a team, aren't we? I think Piplup just wants to be the one to find it. Yeah, because I'm trying to yeah. bring to reclaim my protagonist status. Yeah. <laughs> we'll Is see. Push to the side. See ya. Where will I meet you? We'll all meet back here in about an hour. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> Grovile, Piplup, Chimchar, Zoroark, and Sebastian spread out around the Old Kingdom to search for the Red Dragon. They encounter many things, but nothing like a powerful item of any kind. While searching, Piplup comes across a group of about 15 creatures, all wearing green cloaks and green hats with golden crowns on them. They see Piplup and begin to chase her, but Grovile intervenes. Who are you? All right, Meg, you finally get to speak. The creatures <gasps> stop, and one of them speaks. We are the Quagsil. <laughs> <laughs> Our king ordered us here to capture any Pokemon that weren't registered with us. We will not harm you unless you resist and give us good reason to. But we will capture you if we can. That voice <laughs> is, is just perfect. And yes, don't ask awesome. what a Quagsil is. When I Google Quagsil, it asks if I meant Quagsire. Uh, so yeah, no, it sounds say, like it's a Quagsil. Like a, it's Quagsire's so Gen 9 evolution. This is a hidden evolution. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's the new Pokemon that's coming out with the it's, it's the, uh, the new game. Yeah, the new Scarlet Violet game. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a regional variant. Guys, the AI fanfiction predicted Gen 9. No <laughs> way! No! You know what's funny is there was... Um, a leaker guy who like does riddles related to Pokemon and it's possible he kind of hinted that a, a water ground type might be getting an evolution. <gasps> oh my oh. fucking god. I would so if we actually if life. we actually get Quagsil, I am going to lose my mind. <laughs> and let it be known, let it be known. I I it is I'm pulling up my computer's calendar right now. It it's is June, June 4th. 4th. 9.57 a.m. Now 9.58. Of 2022. Yes, we gotta put the... 2022. On uh, Saturday. Yes. Alright. It is partly cloudy. 
Huh? We're gonna end up just doxing ourselves at this point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I live at this address. At 123 Sesame Street. Alright, Piplup. I'm not afraid of you! <laughs> whoa, whoa. I hope you didn't clip the Wait. microphone. I hope you did. <laughs> Who is your king? Our allegiance is to the Nightmare Tyrant. You serve Darkrai? Yes. We are his pawns. He has told us that if we capture you, we will be rewarded handsomely. You will receive a bag the size of a regular bag with a hundred thousand gold pieces in it. Bag the size of a bag. <laughs> it's like Robot or uh, Dusk Door putting the room inside another room. Grovile, there's so many of them. I know. We can't fight them all. Not by ourselves. But we can't just let them take us. Then we run. We must find the others. Or maybe we do want them to take us because then we get sold to slavery and I get my protagonist status back. Problem solved. So that... That... <laughs> True. These are like supposed to be the two main protagonists. Here. Exactly. Well, be careful what you wish for. Hmm. Yeah? Did you just say, oh shit. Okay. Oh no. Piplup runs behind Grovile, but the Quagsil creatures pursue. Grovile manages to escape their clutches, but Piplup is captured. They stuff her into oh my, a bag. I didn't even read <laughs> the next part. Oh, wait, wait, After wait, a what? long chase, Zorark and Sebastian find Grovile being chased by Quagsil creatures. <laughs> is, is this a regular sized bag? Or... <laughs> Zorark fires a purple blast from her fingers. The blast hits four of the Quagsil minions and causes them to explode. <laughs> Zorark <laughs> looks at the human and he nods in agreement. They both know that they must save Grovile at any cost. Come on, let's go! Sebastian runs towards the minions and draws his sword. He slashes at the Quasal creatures and they fall to the ground with fatal wounds. He turns to Zoroark and they run after Grovile. Grovile sees Zoroark and Sebastian following from behind. He jogs to catch up to them. We've got to save Piplup. She's been captured. Zorwark and Sebastian follow the running Grovile. They see a Quagsil minion attack Grovile from the side. Grovile stops running and uses Dig to send the Quagsil minion flying into the air before it is dashed to pieces on the ground <laughs> below. Zorwark and Sebastian notice a Quagsil minion approaching from behind. Zorwark uses Fire Blast to destroy it. Sebastian notices that the Quagsil creatures are getting closer and closer. Grovile spots the Quagsil minions closing in on all sides. One of the Quagsil creatures is about to strike. Zoroark notices this and uses Thunderbolt to stun the two Quagsil creatures closest to them. How many them. moves do I have? So <laughs> Sebastian notices this and runs up to Grovile. We're not gonna make it! Sebastian points his sword at the Quagsil creatures and he charges forward. Sebastian runs straight at the closest Quagsil creature, swinging his sword down. He strikes it down, and the Quagsil slumps to the ground. Zorark uses her claws to grab one of the fallen Quagsil creatures and rip out its beating heart, Shit. finishing Shit. off the last one. Ah! Mortal Kombat style. Grovile, Zorark, and Sebastian gather together and start running towards where Piplup was captured. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning strikes Zorark. She falls ah! to the ground unconscious. Sebastian notices this and runs over to her. He checks her pulse and sees that she is alive. Question again, uh, do we lose Chimchar again? Yes. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh my nice. god. Oh my god. Y'all, I'm constantly getting shafted. <laughs> <laughs> we only use you it's... for your for your light butt, that's it. What happened? Sebastian points to where the Pokemon fell. I don't know, but something did this to her. Sebastian and Grovile look around for the culprit. There was lightning! Where is it? Grovile examines the area. There are no signs of the Pokemon responsible for the attack. It's gone. Maybe it got away. Sebastian heads to Zoroark. She is lying on the ground. Her eyes rolled back in her head. Oh Sebastian- mm. God, am I Seb dead? <laughs> Sebastian checks her- This is what you get for stealing the spotlight from Piplup. Yeah, exactly, bitch. Sebastian <laughs> checks her pulse again and finds that it is faint. Sebastian wraps his arms around Zoroark and carries her t back towards the group. We've got to get help. Is there a town nearby? There's a temple. 
follow me. Grovile leads the group to the temple. It doesn't take long before they arrive. This way. Grovile runs through the entrance of the temple. Sebastian follows him, carrying Zoroark. The group enters a large room filled with statues of legendary Pokemon. A sign next to the statue says so. Sebastian reads it. Legendaries? Where are all the legendary Pokemon? There's one back at the guild who can help us. I can contact her at this temple. Ugh, that's a long walk. Why don't, why don't we stay here? We can wait for her to arrive. She will. Hey, I'm the story. Do you know where Timshar is? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We'll find him quickly. Once we leave, it'll take forever to get back in. Sebastian hurries off to find Chimchar. He finally spots him. He is sitting next to a tree. Hey, you <laughs> said to meet chill. back in an hour. Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> we need to get to a healer. Zorok is hurt. There's no time to explain. Medic! Chimchar nods. He stands up with haste. He follows Sebastian to the temple. Grovile stands with a distressed look on his face. There you are. I'll contact Celebi. He goes up to one of the smaller statues and places a hand on it. He closes his eyes and pushes his spirit towards the statue. His hand leaves the statue <laughs> and he begins speaking in a foreign language. It's <laughs> it's a language the reader might not understand, oh but the God. author understands. <laughs> Sudden <laughs> Suddenly, a small black portal appears before them. Grovile enters through it. Sebastian, Chimchar, and Zoroark follow him. The portal closes behind them. After a few moments, the group finds themselves back in the Wigglytuff guild. Uh, uh, uh where are we? <laughs> Disregarding the fact that I just summoned a fucking portal from hell <laughs> to get out of this, get past the tunnel of horrors. Uh, a place called the Wigglytuff guild. Chimchar can tell you more. I'm off to the medical ward. Grovile runs off towards the medical ward, carrying the unconscious Zoroark. The medical ward? Is that where the injured Pokemon are being kept? Yes, come on. Chimchar and Sebastian follow to the medical ward. They enter and Grovile speaks to the nurse. I need to take her to a healer. She was struck by a powerful electric attack. The nurse looks at Zoroark. She notices that she is unconscious. I'm sorry, is, is she a close friend? Yes, we've been traveling together. I see. How long has she been like this? Not too long, but we don't know who attacked her. C can you help her? Well, I'm afraid it's too soon to tell. I'll need to run a few tests. I understand. Thank you. I'm so glad that this nurse is a reoccurring character. Yes. <laughs> I love her so much. Yeah, I, 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 I was not expecting the nurse, the nurse to voice. return. I think this is the last time, at least so far, that I've generated this. That you said last time, and she came yeah, back. Yeah, that's true. Like, <laughs> I, love I, I don't know nurse. if I can handle another uh, amputation. <laughs> <laughs> right. so, no, the, 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 the fake doctor is gone. The nurse wheels Zoroark in a hospital bed to the back of the ward. Grofile gives Sebastian and Chimchar a worried look. What are we going to do? We wait. Did either of you happen to find the red dragon? Both Chimchar and Sebastian shake their heads. Grovile sighs. He turns and faces the window. It's raining outside. Have to continue our search on the ground. As opposed to in the sky? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Wigglytuff and Celebi enter the room. They both gasp when they see Sebastian, a human, standing among them. <gasps> There's a human among us. <laughs> among us? What what in the world are you doing here? Aw? I came to save you, of course. <gasps> that was ver very nice of you, ah? But we have no need of a human helping us, ah? Yes, yes, I know. But that doesn't mean I won't help. Well, perhaps you'd like to meet us to discuss it further, ah? Well, I'd be delighted if you would stop making that noise! <laughs> I, feel, I feel like the Oz have lengthened somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's more tender. <laughs> Don't no use more that tender. word to describe it. <laughs> Wigglytuff and Sebastian walk outside. Chimchar and Grovile follow. 
you know, you could really make quite a good story out of this. I think you should finish it. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait. Oh, what do you I... mean? I mean, we shouldn't give up. We need to stop Darkrai. Don't worry. We will. I'm sure you will. <laughs> I'm, am I leaving the group? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sure you will. But you should make quite a good movie out of this. <laughs> Thanks, pal. <laughs> Oh my, thanks, thinking... pal. <laughs> thanks, pal. What questions do you have? Let's start with how you ended up on our planet. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Sebastian begins <laughs> to tell his story as the camera fades to black. No, I want to know the story. Oh, the very no, never mind. It yeah, know. it was Dialga, and he was kidnapped. As the by camera flakes fade, my brain died. wait, wait. As the camera fades to black. This is. Remember, this is supposed to be a movie script? Oh, no wonder <gasps> Chimchar's talking about movies. Yeah! Yes, this whole uh. thing is Chimchar recounting the tale for the movie. The AI is like an aspiring cinematographer or something. <laughs> Interior, center of the earth. Pipple has been carried by the Quagsil to an unknown location. She is released from the bag and falls onto the floor. Oh, those Quagsils sure are heavy. They sure didn't give, me, give you a break. She notices that everyone here is furry and tailless. Piplup walks over to a rock. Someone or something has carved the letter C into the rock. Piplup reads the rock. Suddenly, she cries <laughs> and covers her eyes. A voice behind her speaks. Welcome to my domain. Piplup turns to see a pale, gaunt figure. Its skin is gray and lifeless. It is dressed in a long black cape. Its face is sharp and angular, but not quite right. Its eyes are empty and soulless. Piplup screams. Ah! What is it? Why are you afraid? Ah! <laughs> I am not the one you should be afraid of. Ah! I am simply the one who started the events that brought you to this world. Do not worry, it is not the end of your journey. Piplup looks around and sees a pair of massive eyes watching her from the darkness. Who are you? Right here. It was where are you? No, where are you? <laughs> where are you? Right here. First name Still. right, last name here. <laughs> figures. I am the one known as Grim. I brought you here and I can take you back if you'd like. Wait, fuck, did Piplup die? Oh no. No. Wait, okay, because no. I was like... Because I was like, why the fuck am I tied to the Grim Reaper? Anyway. Yeah. Is this Why would I want to go back? Perhaps you do not wish to continue this journey. You may choose to stay here. I'm on the game over screen. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the continue, continue. screen. Continue. <laughs> I mean, why would I want to stay here? I have no idea. It is your choice. But first, allow me to explain some things. This world is not your world. You are not from here, nor are you from the past or the future. You are from another dimension. A place I cannot take you to. You are from the dimension of fairies. <gasps> you chose to come here to the, the Bloodhead. He is not the only evil in the world. There are others. You must face them. Do you wish to return to your world? Um, no. Very well. Your choice is made. Are you the Nightmare Tyrant? No, but he is not our enemy either. You will learn more about that soon. Then who are our enemies? The Bloodhead and those who serve him. The monsters who have enslaved Pokemon everywhere. Do you know where they are? I know where they are. But I cannot take you to them. I am bound to this place. And who is the Bloodhead? A tyrannical ghost who slaves other enslaves others. He has conquered many worlds. He can even ensnare the minds of his victims through his own blood. Wait. Zora told me that Dusknar did that to her. Is Dusknar the bloodhead? No. Dusknar invented the dark magic of controlling others through blood, but the bloodhead copied this power and used it endlessly, thus becoming known as the bloodhead. <laughs> Zora was once captured by the bloodhead's army. So the bloodhead is... A tyrannical ghost who wants to take over the world and wants to become a god. So Dusknar. <laughs> it's just, no, it's just no, no, two. No. Just, just two. two. <laughs> oh, 
It is up to you to stop him. You've gathered many allies thus far, but it is hard to know who to trust. Is there anyone who can help me? Darkrai, also known as the Nightmare Tyrant, will help you. What? I thought he was evil! Darkrai is a neutral entity in the grand scheme of things. He has tried yeah. to stop the Bloodhead many times through the years, though Wait, he has what? never succeeded. But he knows more about our enemy than anyone. Darkrai is not Wait, the Bloodhead? Shit. What do I do now? I will take you to meet him. Okay. Come. You mean Grim? Did you say Grovile? Yeah, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Huh. What? Wait. <laughs> After the whole then why did we need Chimchar's Chim ass crack? I was about to say, <laughs> you didn't even need my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything. Guess we did need him. Don't bother. You will <laughs> see when we get there. Just keep walking. Okay. I know where the Nightmare Tyrant can be found. He resides in the underground caverns of this place. I do not know exactly where those caverns are, but I know he resides in the caverns. <laughs> so probably <laughs> closely. Okay. They walk for a while until they stop at a cavern lit by a torch in the middle. Sitting next to it is a shadowy figure. He stands up. His entire body is pitch black except for a red neck, gray hair, and a glowing blue eye. It is Darkrai. Grim! Darkrai. You brought this little one to see me? Yeah. Why? She wants your help. Does she oppose the bloodhead? Yes, she does. Then I will grant her wish. Grim turns mm. around and leaves Piplup alone with Darkrai. She casually approaches him. Bye. Or cautiously casually. approaches him. <laughs> she cautiously approaches <laughs> him. <laughs> 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 Just wanted, like, yo, Darkrai, what's up? What's We're good! <laughs> Darkrai raises his right hand towards Piplup. Then, he does something that no one has ever seen before. He... Uh, excuse me? I extend my hand to you. What? It is the only way to grant a wish. I can't reach. Just try! <laughs> <laughs> I can't reach! <laughs> Oops! Oops! That was an oopsie on me! <laughs> Sorry! I can't reach either! Darkrai gets close to the floor so she can reach his hand. This is the hand. biggest plot twist of the century. <laughs> Piplup was Darkrai the whole, whole time. Yep. Darkrai yep. grabs Piplup's hand firmly and pulls her close. Then he places his other hand on top of her head. Now! Think of your wish. I I can't I can't remember what I wanted. Just think of it. Uh, oh jeez, okay. <laughs> I wanted to be able to reach your hand so I could hold it. <laughs> Very <laughs> good. Think jeez. more. And apparently I wanted to stop the bloodhead. Yes. Precisely. But uh, how do I make these um wishes come true? By concentrating. You must concentrate on your wishes. Okay. Close your eyes. Try to remember what you came here for. Piplup closes her eyes and concentrates. Suddenly, images of a past she could not remember until now flash before her. Images of her arriving from another dimension. More images of her meeting Grimm. Finally, the image of a creature made of blood and shadow that appeared before her in the Wigglytuff Gill. I saw him! Yo. Yo, I'm here, open up. As a child, I was forced to eat dog food for dinner. Open the fuck 